Have you ever wondered why we would need an equation like this one? In this lesson, you will model periodic phenomena by using the trigonometric functions. First, let's review the general forms of the sine and cosine equations. Notice the placement of the parentheses around x minus h. b is factored out of the parentheses. The graphs are vertically stretched, shrunk, and are flipped over the x-axis by a. Graphs are shifted up or down by k, up if k is positive, down if k is negative. a and k affect the vertical direction. b and h act horizontally. Horizontally, they are stretched or shrunk by b to make the period 2 pi over b. They are shifted left or right by h, right if h is positive, left if h is negative. Any or all of these transformations can occur at once. Any sinusoidal graph can be written or modeled as either sine or cosine, so there's more than one correct equation for each graph. Here are three different ways to model the blue graph and three different ways to model the green graph. The choice of sine or cosine and which wave pattern we choose to be the start of the wave determines what value h is. y equals k is the equation of the midline of the wave. Previously, we've taken a look at all six trig functions. Here's one period of each of those functions. For tangent and cotangent, the period is pi. For the others, it's 2 pi. Hopefully, you've gotten some practice graphing trig functions that have been stretched or shrunk and shifted horizontally and vertically. Recall that tangent is the slope of the terminal ray. Graphing sine and cosine is easier if you use a five-point pattern that looks kind of like a sideways S for sine and C for cosine. To graph cosecant, lightly sketch the sine pattern. To graph secant, lightly sketch the cosine pattern. On each of these functions, I've indicated with a cross where the point HK would be. Notice that HK is not always a point that's on the graph. Begin graphing the functions at these points and use the values of A and B to determine how tall or short and narrow or wide the graph should be. Tangent and cotangent will have a period of pi over B, the other four, two pi over B. We'll do a couple of examples, but first let's talk about why do we need all of these models. It turns out that all kinds of phenomena in life are periodic, meaning they repeat. For example, the phases of the moon and the migration of birds. Also, many things uh, have motion with a repeating pattern that be can be described with a trig function. In real life, some of this motion is dampened, so the pattern decays or dies out over time, but still can be modeled by a trig equation. There are many applications which use these models. This includes everything from noise-canceling headsets to the study of ocean tides. This is a list of just some of them. You can see it's a long list. The equation given in the opening question turns out to be a temperature model for New Orleans, and it can be used to predict the daily average Celsius temperature for any given day of the year. We'll graph this equation to show the average daily temperature over the course of a year, with January 1st being day zero and December 31st, day 365. A is equal to eight. So this cosine curve has an amplitude of eight, which tells us there's only 16 degrees of temperature variation between the hottest and coolest days. B is two pi over 365, so that tells us the period is 365 days, which makes sense that the temperatures would repeat on a yearly basis with the seasons. H is 197 and K is 20, so the five-point cosine pattern will start at 197.20, with the high temperature 8 above the midline of 20, or 28 degrees Celsius. The low temperature 8 below the midline of 20, or 12 degrees Celsius, will occur half a year before and after the high point. This model represents a typical year in New Orleans, the graph could keep going in both directions to represent past and future. It is a model, so obviously the actual temperature won't be exactly these values. The National Weather Service publishes data regarding the sunset and sunrise for locations in the United States. Here's the data for Denver, Colorado. The data on the 1st and the 21st of each month is plotted on this graph. 
Notice the shape of the graph? We can model this data as a sinusoidal function. The period is 365 days, so b is 2 pi over 365. June 21st is the longest day of the year, and we can see that there are 15 hours of daylight. December 21st, the shortest day, has approximately 9 hours of daylight. The amplitude is half of the difference of those, or 3. We can choose to model this with a cosine function with h equal to 172 on June 21st and k equal to 12, which is halfway between 9 and 15. Here's the equation that models the daylight hours in Denver. In many applications, the variable might re represent something other than angles. For example, a model might be the height of an object as a function of time. In this case, you evaluate the sine of t or the cosine of t as if t were in radians. We looked at a model that was the temperature as a function of the day of the year. The horizontal axis does not have to be x. In this lesson, you have learned to model periodic phenomena by using the trigonometric functions.